Good evening. Thank you, uh, everyone, for, for coming. Uh, just off the bat, I'm going to get past some of the formalities. Uh, I want to thank Senator Eric Adams, Senator Rhoda Jacobs, Council Member Michael Nelson, and David Greenfield, Rabbi Pickus, uh, Chaim Deutsch, Founder Flapper Shumrin, Ali Slavin, Community Liaison, Yvette Clark, Ed Powell, Seventy Precinct Community Council, Hatsko Bennett, Community Advocates, Jeff Lev, the Jewish Community Council, Marie Park, some of whom you'll hear uh, in a few moments. Uh, I gotta say, uh, I've elected in January 1st, and uh, I'm disgusted that I've been to about five or six families who have passed in this way. Um, it's just tired and it's sickening. Um, this is not a game. This is not a video game. When we shoot someone, they die, there's death, and you don't come back. And not just the person who's killed, the family is severely damaged. The mother, the father, the brother, the girlfriend, the cousin. What the heck is wrong with everyone? We can't treat life so devalued, which is what really pisses me off. And I, I kind of understand some of the frustrations of people who decide to pick up a gun. But you have to understand it brings nothing to the community, it brings no resources to the community, and the people you've hurt and killed have nothing to do with the situation that you're in. I live directly across the street. I could have been there asking for change. Any one of us could have been in here getting something for the, for the weekend. Nothing to do with the situation that you're in. No reason to kill someone. They can't come back. It is a coward's move, regardless of how angry you are, what situation you're in. It is a coward's move to take someone's life. It is a coward's move to shoot a gun because you have no idea where the bullet's going to go. Straight, uh, maybe a mile down, uh, an 88-year-old man was shot in Senator Eric Adams district. Nothing to do with your situation. It could be your mother that shot. It could be your child that shot. It could be someone you know that shot. Yusuf Robinson, no matter where I'm walking down the street, the black community or the Jewish community all say what a great person he was. I heard a young black kid look like he was hip hop say, how could they violate such a good man? This type of person can bridge communities and you kill them and he's gone. Death is final. They don't come back. It's not a video game and they're not associated with your problems. If you have an energy for fighting your problems, come to any one of our offices. We'll help you direct your energy. But this is devaluing our community, and I'm tired of it. My name is Shay Shrisong, and I also blog under the name Manish Chana. And that's how I first came to encounter Joseph Robinson, because we shared aspirations and ideals on how to create a better world for the future. Uh, Yosef Robinson was proud to be a Jew. He was proud to be a Jamaican. And he never let either aspect of his identity overshadow the other. We lost a great man this Thursday and uh, our generation lost one of its brightest lights. He did us proud as a black man. He did us proud as a Jew. He did us proud as a Jew of color. He lived his life with compassion and selflessness and always putting others before himself. And I'm proud to say I knew him for however short I did. And that he went out never betraying any of those ideals that he lived by. Next, I'd like to call Senator Eric Adams. I think it's important to, as I spoke with uh, Sean, uh, his brother-in-law, uh, to point out how 
uh, crucial it is that uh, the community and the city understands that uh, the family appreciate what the New York City Police Department has done during this investigation and they appreciate the initiative that the mayor has put in place to deal with the issues of gun and gun violence and they wanted that message to be resonated and they also appreciate how uh, the city community has embraced this family and embraced of Yusuf. Uh, it's important, I'm going to add $1,000 to the reward that Crime Stoppers has already uh, put out, but that should not be the reason for people to turn in the individuals who committed this crime. It's not about the economics, it's about the public safety. That gun is still out there. That gun is in someone's home, it's under someone's mattress, it's in someone's closet. We must bring that gun in and we must turn the person who's guilty of this crime to justice. We will stand in this rain because this issue is important. Our communities cannot continue to pour bullets like we're pouring rain. We have an obligation and a responsibility to bring public safety and stability to our community. We lost a great man, but the path of that bullet is still traveling and is piercing the body of our community through violence. Violence must end, and this should be a symbol to all of us on why we must embrace the concept that you should live by, that we have to live in one city together that's free, free of violence. And so I want to I thank the family for, for coming here and attempted to turn this pain into purpose. Once we rid ourselves of gun violence, once we rid ourselves of the continuing violence of an 88-year-old man or two-year-old girl shot, then we can start the process of healing of this city. So I want to add my voice and use my office and do all we can to assist the mayor and the police department on dealing with the issue of gun violence. Uh, Assemblymember Rhoda Jacobs. My office is right down the block. So it's kind of uh, makes you painfully aware, reminds you of what happens here and the needs in our community. I have to say, I usually talk about all the things my office offers, but I really would rather speak to the fact that, as a legislator, how difficult it is to get gun legislation through past state after state, and no matter how much, no matter how many laws and how many bills we introduce to remove the presence of guns, to reduce the presence of gun violence, we're up against a bigger lobby, a lobby that's got a lot of money to spend, and uh, the profit that is made by people who deal with guns is not enjoyed by the people who pick up those guns and lie shot and wounded in our streets. But no matter what we do, until we get a larger scale, a national response, no matter what we do in New York City or New York State, we still have problems keeping those guns from crossing our borders. And again, I say, big business, big lobby, that money doesn't go into our community. But at the same time, the answer is not to cut the programs like our summer youth employment, which we had to Senator Adams, I said we really have to fight to restore it because for every single dollar that we save in summer youth employment, we would have had somebody off the street, not only employed, but learning to do something and learning how to be a role model to other kids. So I joined the family. It's it's nobody, it's not my first, first occurrence this week. And uh, I think we are all there together in sorrow because it, it affects every one of us. It affects every one of us. So we share your sorrow and pain. Uh, next, I'd like to call Councilmember Mike Nelson. My condolences to the family. He was not just a family member, but a great, great man. Um, they used to call this the Yosef store, not just the liquor store, because people came here for advice or just to listen to him because he was that wise. To so that, that lunatic who did it, turn yourself in. Um, you didn't, you killed one person, which is horrible, but you killed the world. You killed so many people by killing Yosef. He was a bridge between two great communities and he had a heart of gold. Everyone loved Yosef who knew him. And the courage he exhibited is like 
most other people would never have done that, which just added to his greatness. So we in the Midwood area, indeed the world, lost a truly great individual. And I'm so sorry, and to his family especially, and friends, thank you. Next, I'd like to call Councilman David Green. Thank you, Jamani. You know, I, I actually don't represent this neighborhood, so the obvious question is, what am I doing here? I represent Borough Park, Parks of Midwood, and Bensoners. And the answer is that I represent the largest Jewish community in New York. This loss is not just a loss for his friends and for his family, it's a loss for the entire community. And we want the people out there who are responsible for this death to understand that it's not just one person who they've impacted, they've impacted the community and the city of New York. And we're gonna do everything we can and we're gonna work every resource. My office is gonna be adding a $5,000 reward as well, which I think brings us up to around $20,000 in rewards. It's not about the money, it's about the principle. This wasn't, this wasn't a typical person. This was a person who was a shining light, a beacon to the community. I can't tell you over the weekend how many people came to me in Borough Park, where I live, and told me I knew this guy, he was incredible, he was a shining star, and people were literally crying to me. We have an entire t community today that's crying over the loss of Yosef. And so we're just all here to bring the solidarity, to let the people know this is unacceptable. If you're going to commit violence in our communities, we're going to come after you. And it's exactly like Jumani said. If you have a problem, that's what we're here for. We're happy to solve your issue. If you need help with a job, you need some government resources, you're not happy about something, come and talk to us. Don't take out your violence on innocent, innocent people. And so we're united, and we're going to do everything we can to bring this color to justice. Thank you. Last speaker, I'd like to call up Rabbi Pincus, the Council of Jewish Organizations. The entire, the council which represents one of the largest enclaves of Jews residing in the borough of Brooklyn, especially in Midwood, the entire community and all its affiliates join in mourning on this terrible tragedy that has shocked and rocked the community to its heart. I mean, this is a, a gentleman who had a great future a mentor, from, especially for younger children. His, uh, his personality was such, his magnetic personality, that he had influence and everyone came in touch with him. And this is, can be shortly missed. A person like that cannot be readily uh, replaced, and there's a loss, and should be all share in this world. I am a self-described hip-hop generation kid, and I want to offer my condolences to the family and girlfriend again. I also want them to look around at the communities that are behind us. The Jewish community, the black community, Muslim. It's amazing what Yusuf Robinson meant. What's disgusting is what he could have done to bring these communities together. How often is there somebody that can do this? Bring these communities all together. Some crazy person with misguided energy took this out on a person who meant so much to this community and that person is dead and I'm not sure if we fully understand what death means because these bullets are flying so quickly. So quickly. Death is real. It's not a video game. It destroys families and communities and it brings nothing to the community and it doesn't help the situation that you're in that you're trying to get out of. It does nothing for it. And we're all sick and tired of it. We're all sick and tired of it. I'm hoping that the community and the people with the stupid guns in their hand get sick and tired of it as well. Because we're tired of doing this. My office is going to be doing all that we can, putting forward, program, putting forward two programs in September to try to deal with this issue. And I'm hoping it does something. But the only way it's going to do something is the people listen to what's going on and see the pain that you're causing and then seeing that what you did has no positive results so it makes no the sense. The funeral is going to be Monday evening at 7 p.m. at Shermer Hadass on 36th Street and 14th Avenue. 